Hey, how's it going? Mr. Dent here. Today's topic is adding non-perpendicular vectors. Here's what I'd like you to know how to do by the end of this screencast. I want you to be able to add vectors that are not perpendicular to one another. Up to this point, we've, we've done vector addition involving vectors that are perpendicular to each other. What if, however, we have vectors that are not perpendicular to each other. So this would be an example of non-perpendicular vectors. We have a vector, a displacement vector of 50 kilometers, 35 degrees to the ground, and then we have another vector that's 10 degrees to the ground at, with, a, with a displacement of 220 kilometers. Since these are not perpendicular, we can't directly use the vector addition system that we've done so far. We can't just simply use Pythagor Pythagorean theorem and the tangent func function to do that. So we have to use a different approach. And so here's the steps to adding non-perpendicular vectors. First, we want to be able, we're, we're going to have to select a coordinate system. And, and at the same time, it would be a great idea to sketch and label each vector. And you should always do this even if they were perpendicular to each other. I think it's very helpful to do that. And then we want to find the x and y components of all the vectors. And so this would, using the example from before, this is what we would do. We would basically create a triangle for each of those non-perpendicular vectors. <clears throat> Then we would find the x and y components of the total displacement. So what we could do there is, um, since we, we know this would be similar to doing this graphically, or we could think of it graphically, you know, we, basically what we're doing is we're finding this resultant here, and excuse my non-straight line, Essentially, we are finding, if we added these two vectors, because we're going from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. Now, we're going to be doing this mathematically. We're not going to be doing it on graph paper. However, you need to kind of think of that's what you're doing. And so, since we resolve this vector into its x and y, and we resolve this vector into its x and y, if we do that and then add them all together, we would be at this step right here. We would find the x and y components of the total displacement. Um, and once we, we've done that, um, we can then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant vector. Then we could use our tangent function to find the angle of that resultant vector. Let's see what that looks like in an actual problem. Okay, so Here's our problem. We have an airplane flying parallel to the ground and it undergoes two consecutive displacements. The first is 75 kilometers, 30 degrees west of north. So they kind of worded that a little bit funny. Um, so you need to pay attention to what comes first in that description. And when we get into drawing or sketching um, our vectors, that'll become more clear. And then we have a second displacement vector of 155 kilometers, 60 degrees east of north. Again, the wording is kind of funny and you have to pay attention to the wording. And so we want to know the total displacement of the airplane. So let's just follow along using our steps that I gave you previously. So we're going to select a coordinate system. So it just makes sense to align our X and Y axes with um, north, south, east, and west. So this would be, um, you know, this would be north, this would be east, south, and west. And that, that should make sense. So, um, so I've drawn, I have the, the vectors actually drawn. Now let's go ahead and label those. So here's where you have to pay attention to the wording given. Sometimes the wording is a little tricky since it's saying, so we'll, we'll talk about this first vector and it says it's 75 kilometers and it's saying that it's 30 degrees west of north. Well here's our north line so we would, we would have our angle as 30 degrees 
from that in the westward direction. And the same goes for our second vector, and it says 60 degrees east of north. So again, our north line is, is, is along this little blue line that I've added, and so 60 degrees east of that north line. Now that we have all of it, we have our, our vectors drawn and labeled, now we can move on to the next step, which is to find the x and y components of all the vectors. Since we only have two vectors, we're, we just have to basically resolve them from the previous chapters, or previous um, screencast, I should say. So again, let me, let me go ahead and just put a little note there. Basically, you are resolving each of these vectors. That's what you're, we're, we're going to be doing in this step. Um, so I will resolve this first vector into its x and y component. So and it's a good idea to label everything with you know the first distance with d sub 1 and then you would have your x sub 1 and y sub 1 and that makes it easier to keep track of as you go because sometimes these problems get fairly large with multiple vectors, maybe three or four different vectors, and it gets very, very um, complicated with all of the x's and the y's, so it's a good idea to put subscripts to indicate which is which. Okay, now we are ready to go ahead and resolve each of these vectors into their x and y components. So. To do that, um, recall from previous screencasts on resolving vectors, we're, we're going to use the cosine to find the x component. In this case, we're calling that the change in x, um, and then d is, is, the, is the hypotenuse here. So that would be your actual magnitude of the vector. And then the same goes for sine. Um, sine is going to be, we're going to use change in y, is, is the um, that um, vertical component and then D being the hypotenuse or D is the um, actual vector, the magnitude of that vector. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and see what that looks like. So um, here I down below here I've done the I have found you know x1 so uh, as I said before, we, you'd like to, it's a good idea to label each of these sides of the triangles. Basically, we, that's what we're doing. We're finding the side of this tri the, the two sides of this triangle or find the two sides of this triangle. And so I have them labeled with sub 1 and sub 2. And so x1, I, I took cosine of 120 degrees. So notice that I used 120 degrees instead of 30. Um, and that's because I want to keep this consistent. And in the, in the way, the best way to do that is um, whatever angle you're given, you may you want to actually rewrite that angle as if it was off of the the positive x-axis. So this would be the positive x-axis right here um, along this line right here. And then so, and this is just by convention. That's what you know. At some point in mathematics, it was decided we'll go off will go counterclockwise and that would be a positive angle and so um, since this would be 90 and this would be 30 this would be 120 degrees um, and I know you can work it out other ways you could use 30 degrees but then we would have to be instead of using cosine you'd actually be um, doing um, sine in that case and just to keep it simple and consistent and since typically we've been using cosine to find the, the change in x. If you go ahead and convert your angles to as if they were off of the positive x-axis, it works out that way. Just You just need to trust that, I guess, is, is one way. One thing I'd like you to, to, to have that approach, that you're just going to trust the system. So anyway, um, so cosine of 120 degrees times the magnitude or the side d is going to give us a negative 37.5 and that's why it's important to, to understand that's why it's important to do it that use that angle as I described off of the positive x axis, x axis and that makes sure that we get the correct sign for this because um, 
this will be a negative um, when it goes into our result and it's actually it needs to be negative and if you didn't do it that way then you wouldn't have a negative sign on that and so you'd repeat the same process with y1 and you're going to use sine of 120 degrees um, times um, the magnitude um, or psi d75 is going to give us 65.0 kilometers and I did the same thing for my x2 and y2 um, you can see that and you don't need me to read that to you um, so now at this point we have found all of our X's and Y's and so um, we found the X and Y components for each of those vectors now what we want to do is is accumulate those into one X um, and one Y and so we would call that um, that that would basically become our new triangle or our resultant vector so since the beginning of this the situation was here you know we're going to draw a line if you were actually to sketch this out it would be the line from the the tail of the first to the tip of the last and so I've drawn this orange line and then basically the two um, all of the vectors that you found for each individual triangle they should add up to represent this would be x total um, this would be x total here I'm just using TOT and that's using um, subscript there so X total would be adding those two vectors that I found before this X1 and X2 or actually the components of the vectors I should say and so that gives me 96.5 kilometers and I'm going to do the same thing here for Y this would be this would represent Y total and so I went ahead and added y1 and y2 and that gives me 142 kilometers so now I've I have essentially have a new triangle or you could think of this as the triangle from our resultant vector and so the resultant it would be the hypotenuse and these would be the two legs of that hypotenuse at this point we're now ready to use Pythagorean theorem um, to add these doing you know vector addition like we did in a previous screencast so remember that would be a squared equals b squared um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared I should say um, and so instead of you could think of this as c squared here equals a squared plus b squared we're just giving them slightly different names here so I have d which is d D is the, the total distance here, or the total displacement, I guess we, would be the better word to use. And that's going to be equal to um, the, you know, side A, and then for our Y component, or our change in Y, that would be side B. And so we could solve that using Pythagorean theorem. And so D is going to be equal to 172.1 kilometers. So at this point, we have found the magnitude. So right now, we have the magnitude um, of our resultant um, vector. And now we just have to find this angle here to give us our direction. And so um, we will use those that x, x total and y total to do that and so this would be that step where we're using a suitable trig function to find the angle and so since we know opposite side we know adjacent side we would use the tangent function so recall from our earlier screencast where we use this to find the angle you have to use the inverse of of the tangent function so the angle is going to be equal to the inverse tangent um, times y total over x total and so I plug my numbers in and we get 56 degrees for our direction so that's 50 degree 56 degrees off of the x-axis and so our final um, answer should be um, or our final total displacement is going to be 172.1 kilometers 56 degrees north of east
Okay, this wraps up this screencast. Um, I know um, we only did one example this time. Um, I think you'll see that that this process is more of a tedious process rather than a, a difficult process. You're you're really not doing anything anything really new here. It's just um, you're taking things that we've learned in previous screencasts and you're doing more of it. Um, I think the main thing is that you pay attention to what you're doing and you really, really, really should buy into um, to converting your angles to an angle that's um, off of the positive x-axis. Um, if you don't, it can get really easy to not have the correct sign. Right? That is, if the, the, it's going to be a, a, a positive value or a negative value. And when you go into adding all of your X's together for an X total or, or your, all of your Y's together to give you a Y total um, for that resultant vector, then um, you're, you're going to come out with an answer that's not going to be correct. So um, I hope you, you, you consider strongly doing it that way. Otherwise, you're going to have to think about that, and, and it can get confusing. So... Um, anyway, I, I just hope, I just really urge you to do that. Um, so I guess this is it for the screencast. Um, I hope you um, enjoyed the screencast and I hope you got something out of it. And I will see you in class.